Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to unlock your secret superpower. I'm going to be showing you how you can actually see the direction of polarized light with your eyes. So what you're going to be looking for is called Hadinger's brush. And I'd like to thank Mel Science for sponsoring this video. I'm actually going to be using the polarizers from their polarizer kit in order to show you this experiment today. To understand how polarization works, you have to understand that there's basically two different types of light. Left polarized light and right polarized light. So this left and right polarized light can either move in a circle and be circularly polarized, or it can move in a line and be linearly polarized. You can actually separate and distinguish these two different types of light by using a polarizer. Almost all of the light around you is unpolarized, but that's not exactly true. For example, let's take our polarizer outside and see if we can see any differences in the light that we see. You'll notice that when we go outside, you can see the reflection on the car here. But when I turn the polarizer, that reflection goes away. So you're able to block glares by using a polarizer. The reason is because when light bounces off glass or a plastic surface, it gets polarized. But let's see if all types of glare are blocked by the polarizer. For this, I'm gonna be using my Mel Science Kit. For example, let me set a piece of plastic here, and you can see the reflection of my flashlight off of the plastic. But now let me put the polarizer over it. Look how you can actually get it to almost completely disappear. So it doesn't block the regular light, but it does block the reflection. So this is where sunglasses come in handy because sunglasses can actually block this glare. Because the light that comes off of surfaces is always polarized in this direction. So as long as you orient your sunglasses the right way, you can block it. If they're the wrong way, it just lets it through like normal. But surprisingly, not all glares are blocked by polarizers. For example, let's take a piece of metal here. You can see that bright reflection coming off the metal. Now let's try our polarizer. So you can see that the light coming off of the metal is not polarized. But you can see on my reflective background back here, it is polarized because that's getting dimmer and brighter. But the metal is not. So sunglasses don't do anything to block glare off of metal. Now we get to the really interesting point. I've shown you how you can use polarizers to detect if light is polarized or not. But did you know that some humans can actually detect polarized light with their eyes? Let's see if you can do it. So what you're going to be looking for is called Hadinger's brush. Okay, so in order to see this, you have to be trained a little bit to see it. The best way to see it is to get a polarizer like this. And then what you need is a blank textureless background that's bright. So this light worked really well for me to see it. So what you wanna do is hold the polarizer in front of your eyes. You can hold it out like this or in front of your eyes, it doesn't matter. And you're gonna be looking directly in the center of your vision. And what you're going to be looking for is a really dim image that looks like this. Now for me, this reminds me of P orbitals. So if you're into chemistry, you know that it looks somewhat like P orbitals. So it's gonna be a yellow and a blue cross together, and it's gonna be really faint. Whoa. Okay, I can see it. That is so cool. Holy cow. You can see polarized light. I had no idea, that is so cool. For me, the blue is more pronounced than the yellow. So I can see the blue a lot better. So right now I can tell that this is the way the electrical field is moving. Now it's like this. Now it's like this. That is so cool. And if you're wondering about how big it is, hold your hand out in front of you and the size of your thumb in your view there, that's about how big it is for me. So it's gonna be around that size. So it's not like it's gonna be huge in your field of vision. It's gonna take up just a small portion of your field of view. So the easiest way to do this is with a polarizer like this. But you can actually do this just by looking at an LCD screen. Because if you remember, the light coming off an LCD screen is also polarized. So I'm going to be showing you a blank white screen to try this on. Remember though, if you're using your phone, it's not gonna work very well, especially if you have a newer iPhone or a newer Android or something. The reason is because on newer phones, they've changed the polarization a little bit so that when you're reading with sunglasses, it doesn't block your light coming off your phone. 
So this isn't gonna work very well if you try it on a phone. So try to find a computer monitor where you can open this up and look at this blank white screen. And as you look at the screen, if the screen were taking up your entire field of vision, or if the screen were directly in the center of your vision, on directly in the center of the screen, you should see this image. Now I'm gonna make this image go away and try to stare at this screen and see what you see. And also remember that depending on how your head is tilted, the blue and the yellow might not be arranged how I've shown it in the picture. It depends on how your screen is and how your head is tilted. But for me and my screen, how I showed it on the picture there is exactly how I saw it, with the yellow being horizontal. What's difficult about Haydinger's brush here is that you can't show it to anybody because it occurs directly in the eye. It occurs in the macula portion of your eye. That's the portion of your eye where you see the most acute color vision. What's even cooler about this is when you see the image, for example, let me show the image here, the direction of the blue bulbs coming off, that is the direction of the electric field. Now this just blows me away. It means that humans are actually able to detect the direction of polarization of light and even the direction of the electric field in the light. So you can tell which direction it's even oriented in space by the different colors. That just blows me away. We can detect these minute little things around us that we never knew we were capable of. What's even cooler about this is because of the specific location that it occurs in your eye, in the macula, it means that you can train yourself to be able to know where the macula is in your field of vision. Now this becomes extremely helpful for people with vision problems. For example, there's something called macular degeneration where the macula has problems and you can't see very well in that area. But you can actually train yourself to look at different areas besides the area right in your center of vision. And the way they can do that is by training people to see Haydinger's brush and then focusing on areas that aren't in that area. Or you can even train people that have a lazy eye, an eye that diverges off of center, to focus on the center by focusing on Haydinger's brush because it always occurs in the center of vision. And again, I'd like to thank Mel Science for sponsoring this video. This specific kit that I used today has so many more cool experiments that you can do with polarization. I highly recommend it. There's other ones that you can do, for example, here's one with diffusion, iodine diffusing through a solid bag. Mel Science Boxes are a subscription box that's sent to you monthly. So you can try your own experiments and do all these different cool experiments with different aspects of science in physics, chemistry, anything you want. And you can do them at home. So I highly recommend these Mel Science kits. I've done many of their kits before. I've purchased them in the past for myself and my kids as well. I highly recommend them. So if you want to check out Mel's science kits, click the link in my description and type in the promo code ACTIONLAB and you can get 50% off your first month. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also you can hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out the Action Lab shorts where I do videos similar to this channel, but they're much shorter in less than a minute. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.